Hi, I'm Tom Stevenson and welcome to Introduction to Construction. In today's lecture 10A, we are going to be discussing the role of construction associations and some of the certification programs that are available, particularly from a Canadian perspective, but we will be bringing in some uh, global and uh, US-based um, uh, opportunities and certifications and roles that are played as well. So it'll be a very sort of um, far-reaching uh, overview. And this will be the first of two sections on this uh, particular topic. Maybe three if it takes enough. <laughs> we'll see. All right. Um, so we'll be looking at some of the different, and one of the things you're going to find with associations is there are a lot of acronyms to Remember, every association seems to like to use some sort of acronym, so it's hard to um, remember them all, but they are definitely um, there. And so we're going to look at also uh, the role that professional trade associations play and what they're trying to do and accomplish typically. There's usually some sort of um, motive towards what they're trying to do for their members because if why would you join and become a member of a particular association if they're really not doing much for you so typically they try to do everything they can for their particular uh, members and maybe before i you know start running into the gambit of uh, different associations um, they're usually uh, developed at different levels that kind of match up with um, governments very often. Uh, so you, a, a home building association will have a local uh, chapter uh, that really sort of responds to local needs. That could be, you could have a home building chapter in a town or in a city. Uh, and then you have provincial chapters, which all of the local ones kind of um, report into. And very often when you become a member of a local, you become member of the provincial because they're joined up to each other. They're interconnected. And then if you're a member of the provincial one, very often then they will join up to a national uh, one. Not always, but uh, usually that's the way it is. So a good example that I could probably mention uh, would be BUILD, Building Industry and Land Development Association. So that's Toronto's Home Builder Association. Uh, they used to be called Greater Toronto Home Builders Association. Then they kind of got stuck on B-I-L-D, which kind of spells build. Um, but uh, that would be the local. Then the provincial is the Ontario Home Builders Association, O-H-B-A. And uh, nationally, that would be the Canadian Home Builders Association, C-H-B-A. And so you can think of it too, that um, the Toronto would definitely lobby the municipal government in Toronto, like the mayor's office, uh, for things like municipal zoning and adjustments and anything that would positively impact their members. Provincially, they would lobby the provincial government. So they would be trying to get things in place that would make it more advantageous for them being taxed or being able to build uh, with the provincial government. And then nationally, they would law the national uh, CHBA would lobby the Canadian uh, federal government for, again, taxation programs, um, regulatory requirements that provide better opportunities for their members. And of course, part of the big sales with association is that you hire in Canada, literally hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people that are involved in the construction industry. Uh, so it, it is a big dominant player as far as employment goes, and that has influence because these are voters. Uh, same thing goes with um, the uh, Toronto Construction Association. You know, they really are about Toronto, and the Canadian Construction Association is about Canada. And then we have the Ontario General Contractors Association. So you've got these uh, nuanced differences uh, between the associations. So some associations might have a few members, you know, some like Toronto or Vancouver would have thousands of members uh, that would be part of their associations. And um, those chapters, as I mentioned, national, provincial, local um, structures, um, depending on the membership and depending on um, the focus for the members. Uh, really lobbying groups, they form a very powerful lobbying group in much, uh, in much of the various industries. 
because one person, like you're one company, if you're the biggest construction company in Canada, how much lobbying power are you going to have? But if you are a group that represents hundreds of thousands of workers, hmm, then you're going to be paid attention to. So it's like anything, um, there's strength in numbers, right? And this isn't just in construction. You can go through any sector in any industry and you'll see it. Uh, development of standard documents, practice guides, things that also will make it easier for their members, like standardized contracts, uh, like CCDC, that makes it easier to understand and that they're tried and true and they've been vetted by a lot of skilled professionals in the industry to come up with the best document. Um, some associations are very into the education and training of their members. I say some, some are better at it than others, to be honest. Uh, and uh, some are very forward thinking that way and they really are, are um, um, involved in that area and certification programs uh, as well that are done through um, associations or a outreaching arm of an association. Uh, codes of conduct. So if you want to be a member of the association, really an association does not want somebody that is reflecting poorly on the industry because it reflects poorly on the industry it reflects poorly on the membership and so they would not want that person or company to be part of their membership so if you're not abiding by those codes of practice you're typically turfed out uh, they'll have industry publications and that's very interesting too and they'll a lot of them will be heavily involved in trying to push innovative products and ideas um, and it's a from personal experience, it's a, a fantastic place to network with other people like yourself that are in, interested in furthering their particular business interests, but are also really sort of passionate about the construction industry as a whole. Um, so Canadian Construction Association, probably one of the premier uh, associations in Canada, uh, really um, uh, is involved with um, the it's really ICI sectors, institutional, commercial, industrial sectors, and it, it, it casts a wide sort of net over the construction industry of what um, it covers. Remember, the members too are, you know, residential high-rise condominium building, that sort of thing is also involved in there. So it's, it consists of lawyers, it consists of subcontractors, suppliers, uh, general contractors, uh, consultants. So it's got a, a really diverse mixture as well of um, people that are trying to um, better the industry. So uh, usually, again, this is one of those multi laddered ones, typically through local or provincial associations and membership in one often means a membership in the other or there's certain dues that are split out uh, based on uh, what each association will get. Um, they've been involved in a lot of things, too numerous to mention. And you can go to any of these ones I mentioned, their website, and find out more information about them. But definitely CCDC documents, um, so basically the Canadian Construction Document Committee. Um, they've been involved in a, a number of developments of standard practices and really been instrumental in this, leading in this particular area. They also... Uh, are responsible for the Gold Seal Certification Program. And Gold Seal is um, one of the premier certifications that is recognized in Canada in the ICI sector. And they have different designations, superintendent, estimator, project manager, owner's construction manager, construction safety coordinator. So if you graduate from your program, uh, in construction, it's probably worth your while to look into uh, some of these certifications. So if you end up working as an estimator, I would be looking at the estimator certification. Or if you end up working as a project coordinator and you eventually want to be a project manager, maybe you're going to look at project manager or site superintendent. So there, there is pretty much a, a designation that would fit um, people that are entering the construction, uh, construction industry. Now you have to have a certain amount of experience and you have to pass exams. You may have to take uh, some courses depending on the program that you may have uh, graduated from. For example, the degree program, um, I don't think there's very many courses, but these are always changing. Um, so you'd probably be credited for most, if not all. Uh, they might have the ethics course that they require, but I'm not, I'm not sure exactly as they 
these things are always in flux a little bit, but let's just know this, that you'd have a lot of it done and it would not be a big leap other than getting the work experience done and writing the exam for it. Um, so it'd be definitely a designation that um, you could look towards uh, getting. Very recognized in Canada's ICI sector. Probably not that recognized globally, but very recognized uh, in Canada's um, uh, ICI sector. So that would be it. And these are giving you some of the education and training uh, credits required. So there's, there's a lot of credits that you would likely receive, but you could check into that um, from that perspective. And there's a lot of continuing education courses that um, can be taken to um, bring you towards this and receiving um, the credit. All right. Um, so, and it has a, a, you know, sort of a code of ethics as, as far as fairness and loyalty, commitment to public, devotion to high needs, a personal honor, professional integrity, knowledge of developments in the area of gold seal certification, area of competence, estimator, estimating, project manager, project management, competency in the performance of construction management services, and that continuous improvement thing that we've been talking about in this course a willingness to participate in ongoing education because let's face it, the world is changing and we got to change with it and we got to stay up to speed. Um, so, and as I mentioned, um, it's been involved in the uh, uh, development of CCDC documents. So you can see other areas like the Royal Architectural Institute of Canada, uh, which is consistent, you can guess, mostly of architects, uh, specification writers, uh, consultants, and engineers. And so to get together and collaboratively, that's where we've gotten this CCDC. So in further studies and contracts and contract law, you'll learn about Canadian construction document committees, because there's pretty much a, a standardized contract for every type of uh, construction work that's been developed by CCDC. And if there's new um, contracting models that come out, then usually they're the first ones to start looking at, well, can we standardize this into a format that can be best utilized by members across the country? Um, so this is a, a quick list of these, and these are always being updated, ongoing um, updates typically. Uh, so you can see the different contracts we've talked about in earlier videos of different contracts, and you can see some of the ones that are um, available. You can see the list there and the ongoing list uh, of documents. And there's other documents that they're not all listed here that are also available. So it uh, gives familiarization, standardization, makes it easier to um, understand how the contracts work. And then each contract will have its own unique uh, nuances um, to it that are developed um, from it. So just giving you some good uh, sort of uh, background on that and worthwhile um, looking into in more detail. Typical like a CCDC2 lump sum or stipulated price uh, contract as an example is a contract if you, the owner, are trying to get work done and you want to get a single price based on it. And then there's opportunities for things like contingencies and allowances and other things within that contract. And of course, the change order process is also described. And then there's, when there's changes, and there generally is, um, there's a process involved and then that's followed and it's pretty sort of, um, becomes very sort of standardized that way, which makes it easier for companies, consultants, owners, everybody that's involved, rather than having everybody come up with their own sort of unique um, base contracts. Toronto Construction Association, a place near and dear to my heart, um, excellent uh, association. Um, you wouldn't, you know, our students at George Brown College in our degree program, to be honest, I'm not quite sure that we'd have a degree program if it wasn't for uh, the Toronto Construction Association. Um, they approached uh, us years back and um, we worked collaboratively with them. And as a result, we got our four-year degree program. Why did they want to do that? Well, they wanted to make the industry more professional. They wanted to have better educated people that they hire. So they made it imperative for them to uh, work on that. And they've been very supportive of all our programs, uh, from the renovation program to the two- and three-year construction engineering program. So 
uh, it's really been a um, good association to uh, work with in that way. And as I mentioned before, some associations are very proactive on the education side. They actually have a whole education uh, wing to them, which is called the Construction Institute of Canada, tcic.ca, which is working very, very hard to educate uh, their members with particular areas, like a lot of the things we've talked about in this course, but more in depth, whether it's project management, planning and scheduling, lean construction methodology, uh, print reading, you name it. Um, there's a lot of professional type uh, courses that also are credited with Gold Seal because Toronto Construction Association is is associated with the Canadian Construction Association. So there's that laddering effect that, that helps that way. And if there's a Toronto Construction Association, then you can bet there's a Vancouver Construction Association and so on uh, that work in their local members' interests. And Toronto would obviously be the uh, biggest um, uh, local chapter type uh, construction association in Canada, given the size and scope of the amount of work that takes place in Toronto. So really, you can sort of get the idea of who's involved and who it who it covers. And again, they have their own sort of uh, ethics and uh, accountability that they expect their members to follow. And if the members aren't following that, guess what? Um, time to uh, find a different association to associate with because they don't want bad press uh, to reflect on uh, the goodwill of all the other members in the association. Um, so you can find, you'll find that that's the typical sort of um, model that, or it should be that models fall. And as I mentioned, the Construction Institute of Canada, and I might dive into this one a little bit um, later, just to give you a little bit of background in our second video, but um, TCIC, .ca. Again, if you're looking for uh, that, uh, courses that are accredited, you know, with, C, with um, Gold Seal, etc., um, it's probably a good source when you're working in the uh, industry from that perspective and um, offers a lot of breadth. Uh, and with change that's happening so rapidly in all sectors, it's good to be able to have a source that you could uh, rely on for those types of things. Again, that's why we remember we talked about ethics in a the previous lectures. Um, that's why it's important, right? Because we definitely need to um, upgrade uh, the um, ethical perception of the construction industry as a whole. And there are so many unfortunate ways that things can go south um, with regards to keeping a uh, moral guard on how businesses are run. And so again, this is following along those lines um, that way and fitting in with um, the industry partnerships and networking opportunities as well. Nice thing about taking professional courses and myself having taught many professional courses at TCIC uh, is that you are working with working professionals. So there's a great knowledge base there that you can use to enhance and increase the learning in the classroom uh, when people have that much experience that's involved with it. I did mention the home building associations earlier, like the Building Industry and Land Development Association, Ontario Home Builders, Canadian Home Builders Association. To be honest, I sat for over 23 years on uh, Build, Building Industry and Land Development Association. They were really instrumental in George Brown College getting the building renovation program. Uh, I can remember uh, when I sort of came up with the idea for the building um, building renovation program. Uh, I talked to another faculty member at the time that had been involved with the then Greater Toronto Home Builders Association. And he said, well, if you want to get industry support, they're the place to go. He told me who was leading it up. I went there and they were actually very welcoming because they needed people that were better trained in the renovation sector. So they were able to get tons of support letters from members. They were able to back it. And that carries a lot of weight as a college. If you're trying to develop a new program, you have to prove to the Ministry of Education that this program has legs, that this program is going to be in demand, that industry wants this program before they're going to agree to fund training in it. And so this is, again, from uh, differing points of view, how an association can actually help um, improve the education of its members and make the industry more professional. So it's very like what CCA, uh, sorry, TCA did with our degree program. 
In this case, they really helped our uh, two-year and three-year building renovation programs. I'm not sure. Um, I'm not sure that I could have gotten that kind of information pulled together to develop the proposal and get it through without their support. Uh, Ontario Home Builders Association, provincially, as I mentioned, and then actually I, I sat on a on a committee, the um, Professional Development Committee, it used to be called the Education Committee for the Canadian Home Builders Association for about 15 years. And that was a great learning experience for me uh, because it was all the uh, builders and developers from across Canada that were interested in improving the education of the memberships. And so um, I got to work with them on a number of projects and uh, different items and present a number of times. Uh, at their yearly meetings and so they're great the, the amount of networking opportunities and learning that came from me being able to participate with them uh, was just um, amazing and so a lot of my knowledge about um, net zero and equilibrium houses and the movement towards energy efficiency came long before it was actually a thing and a lot of it um, a good part of it I owe to um, sitting on that committee with the Canadian Home Builders Association. So my point when pointing these things out are, I feel like if you get yourself involved professionally in one of these associations, in one of these areas, when you graduate, it's going to make a difference for you personally. So there, as you're going to see by the second lecture that I go through, there's a lot of association, there's a lot of certifications that are involved. So you have to kind of figure out, well, which one sort of has a calling towards me? Which one am I interested in? And um, then you, you start to invest some time in it. And it does take a lot of time. Like I'm not going to say that it didn't take time. There was a there was a monthly meeting for like every month for 21 years. And trust me, there was a lot of those meetings that I would have liked to have missed, but I knew that there were certain things that they were covering that they wanted my input uh, and that sort of thing. And actually you had to get elected to get on that committee. Um, so there were elections and other things like that nature. So you kind of have to put yourself out there. You kind of have to network with people, but the amount of people in it that you get to know and provides you immense opportunities in your career. Um, there's this um, saying, and I'm thinking of doing a short uh, video on this for my YouTube channel, but um, really there's this, this uh, where you think about luck and opportunity or chance and opportunity. And um, people say, oh, they're lucky. Oh, they were just lucky. Look at this guy, they're just lucky. Yeah. But there, I feel like there's this opportunity bus that just keeps driving around and keeps driving around. And if you're ready for it, then it'll actually stop for you and you can get onto it. But if you're not ready for it, it just keeps going right on by you. But being involved in these opportunities, um, all of a sudden, you get to know somebody and they mention something and it's an opportunity that fits what you want to do. You're ready for it and you can take advantage of it. But if you're not involved in any of this stuff and you just got your head down in a trailer or you're, you're working with a single company, you're not seeing how the rest of the world is operating and you're not making those connections. It's not going to be the same for you. You're not going to have as many opportunities that way. You're limiting your opportunities. You're, you're, limiting the chances, chance, or opportunities of luck coming your way. And um, you won't really sort of be able to decipher it when you do see it. But if you're involved in these things, you start to see and get a pulse of how things are going. I think it's a little bit too like um, people that have never traveled and they've kind of stayed in their hometown their whole life. You know what, they might be happy enough, but I just don't think that they have a world view of how things work. I think you have sort of a very sort of myopic view of how things work. And I think if you get the opportunity to sort of open up to a wider spectrum, it's going to make a big difference in your life and your career. So I'm kind of in this first one, just sort of laying the groundwork that you can think about the opportunities that are there and take it seriously. Feel your own pulse as you go through 
um, your preparation for a career in construction, or if you've started in construction, uh, keep your eyes on what's of interest to you. You know, is it really like uh, um, climate change and energy efficiency and that sort of thing? Well, then there's, there's a wealth of areas that like-minded people can actually um, work at and maybe make a difference, um, whether that's going to be in the LEED certification area and uh, uh, Canada Green Building Council, or maybe it's an area where you're interested in lean and uh, reduction of waste and uh, those opportunities. And then again, there's there's opportunities in all these different sectors to, to meet with some, some people and get to know it. And sometimes it's even good to get involved in an area that's not your thing, just to get a little bit of breadth in your thoughts uh, so that you're um, thinking a little bit outside the box. I don't know if the piano's in the view over here, this uh, keyboard, but um, that was kind of my thought when I started looking at uh, playing the piano, right? It's sort of like I've never done this before and I've never had anything in music. Uh, but I want to try something different. I'm all the time thinking about construction. I need to have something that offers some more breadth. So um, when I'm talking about certifications and associations, think about it a little bit. Oh, this guy's given a lecture. No, think about it. Where are some things that connect with me? Hmm, investigate this a little bit more. Hmm, maybe I can get involved as a student member for now. Hmm, so start thinking along those lines and see where that takes you and what opportunities it brings to you. So I just want to give you that quick lead in today and then I'm going to be um, shooting another one which will um, build on what we've been uh, talking about and I'll get into a lot more different opportunities and certification programs that are out there. So this is Tom Stevenson signing off for now and start thinking about this stuff and have a wonderful day. Bye for now.